All right, all right, all right. Let me see if we can uh, invite some friends. Here we go. Here we go. Well, we got two people in the house waiting on Lavelle. Hey, Melissa, what's going on? Thank you for setting this up. All right, let's see. What's going on, Stephen Michael Jones? Hadn't seen you in a long time. How you doing, my brother? Best to you and yours. Ben Johnson, John Mackey. All right. Hey, Vardia, how you doing? Varda? Waiting on Lavelle. You'll be here in a minute. Hey, Candy, how you doing? Divine Goddess Morgan Lee's in the house. Lavelle will be on in just a second. If these shows resonate, please share and visit our tip jar at the end of every show. We would appreciate it. Let's see if he's here. Hello, Andra. Hey, Tate, my brother, what's up? Not able to read comments. Hmm. Is anybody else having that problem? Let me see. No. Hey, Monica. Good afternoon to you. Carmelo, you can't read comments? No comments, huh? I can see the comments. I don't know why y'all can't see the comments. Let me look. I don't know, it must be a fl uh, Facebook flaw. Oh, you can see them. All right. All right. Huh. Well, there shouldn't be a problem. All right. So we're going to have a, another show tonight at 7 o'clock, The Da Vinci Spiral, with our courageous divine goddess sister. We're going to have another one at 8.30 with Rose Neal. And we'll probably do something around 10 o'clock as well. I don't know, Melissa. I'm not sure why you can't see him. Should be able to. Maybe if you go out and come back in. Hey, Yvette Jule, Laurie Ridgeway. Tarma Atwell. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Promatka. Jill Nicholas from Hawaii, Tracy Fleming, Kelly Darren's in the house. I think you're over in Hawaii too, aren't you? Carmela Liff, Legia, how you doing? Muniz. As soon as Lavelle gets here, we'll get the show started. We appreciate everybody sharing. Been a lot of energies coming down since the first, especially. Hang on a second. What's that? Your notebook. Did you read it? Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. I'm just waiting for Lavelle. Cologne, Germany. Sabine, how are you doing? Brian Marshall, what's up, my brother? What's going on in Canada? A lot of people have been talking about all this stuff going down. A lot of the miraculous and uh, what we might call supernatural things happening.
Can y'all hear me? Let me uh, send him a message. Yeah, many, many energies all year, yeah, since the first, right? Lots of sun today in Toronto. Hmm. He's coming. Hey, Neva. Linda Eubanks, what's going on, Linda? He's coming. Oh, it's working now? You came out and came back in? Let's see where he's at. Yeah, I think it's a Facebook thing. Jeannie Campbell, there's Lavelle. <clears throat> Intensive energy the last two days bringing up old stuff from deep inside is very emotional. What's up, my brother? Hey, what's going on, Todd? <laughs> That's what we're fixing to find out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man. Put on the seatbelt. <laughs> Yeah, most definitely. We actually got a lot of the uh, crew members here today. Oh, right on. Um, yeah. As you can see, we got uh, Porter. Hey, Porter. What's up? No doubt. Angel, Angel's um, in the back. He's com coming through now. Um, uh, Amon will be here in a little while. And yeah. also another member of ours, Chuck, is um, with us as well. So um, right. full house today. That's right, man. Over at the Raw. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about go. it. Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah. Just get um, yourself settled. Get yourself settled. Most definitely. Hey, Jessica Lazor. Yeah, some of y'all are having problems with comments. I'd go out and come back in. Melissa did it, and it worked for her. Hey, Gwen Martinez, how you doing? Ingeborg, thank you for all those comments yesterday on the show. Greetings to Norway. Thank you for all those comments yesterday on the show. Hold on. Greetings Sorry. to Norway. I just got to make sure that's not some, some kind of dimensional echo. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> With all this stuff that's been happening. <laughs> Absolutely. Say what's up, Triple. Hello, Todd. How are you doing? Hey, what's up, Triple A? What's going on? I'm doing good. Doing good. Good to see you. I, I caught y'all over... I caught you some of y'all over at that club y'all went to, that show y'all went to the other day. Oh, Munich. Oh, Munich. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That was a good time. There was a few of y'all there. Y'all were looking for somebody. <laughs> one of you, one of you, one of you. I think what it was, uh, uh, I think it was true. Uh, Either mine's or yours or teams. Oh, they were live over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I had so, one live with, you know, with the band. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that one. I'd like mm -hmm. to see that. I'll look on the uh, Universal Brothers and Sisters Circle page, see if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were hanging out backstage, too. That was pretty cool with the artists and everything. Oh, wow. Uh, at some point, we were really there sitting back, talking about some deep stuff. It was pretty yeah. cool, talking with Mick, Mick Donay. Yeah? And, um, yeah, speaking about the industry and things like that. It's pretty cool. I, I figure y'all be, should be playing a gig like that pretty soon. 
Oh yeah. Done, you've done some like that, haven't you? Well, I mean, I know we've, you know, we've been in the, in the, in the spotlight before and AZ, you know, he's not a stranger to it. He was there, uh, um, you know, he was emceeing or he was uh, hosting and that was pretty cool. I didn't get any footage on that, but, but it was pretty cool. Right on. Yeah, I'm actually the, uh, the resident host for that event. Um, they, oh, yeah. uh, we used to uh, do those at a club called P. Eins in uh, Munich, um, which is pretty popular amongst um, some of the A-listers who come here to Europe. Um, so, you know, once again, we got a little bit of, a little bit of leeway into that world, if you will. Right on. I'm going to back this up a little teeny bit. Yeah, get some more. Get some more. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know how to... Can you still hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, cool. So, uh, there's been a lot of people writing and experiencing some things since the first. (laughs) 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 Yeah, no no doubt about it. Yeah, it's... No doubt about it. So, a lot of energy unfolding right now. And, um, for the most part, um... Yeah, we feel the collective is handling it in a in a way that's manageable and um, somewhat stable. A lot of change is taking place, um, as you can see worldwide. And um, for the most part, these were already foreseen. But um, the cool thing is, um, humanity is uh, or Earth humanity, the majority of Earth humanity, and especially awakened souls are acclimating to these energies pretty well. So, um, for the most part, that is. Um, a hoorah for us here in Conan. <laughs> That's a big hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I received a message from a friend just probably a half hour ago. She said, do you know what's going on? Is there some kind of big shift? Uh, she was going through some some uh, physical discomfort. Um, mm-hmm. I had somebody write me yesterday talking about their throat and uh, their ears. Is mm-hmm. uh, What is the... Uh, is the physical discomfort strictly, uh, or is it a sign or a, um, a doorway into some internal work that we need to look at and or uh, just the DNA recalibrating and the shift, uh, the upgrades assimilated? There's a, there's a couple of things that's taking place. Of course, there's the upgrades and um, the cellular uh, reconstruction. Of course, there's also... Um, the uh, energetic calibration, which causes and triggers a lot of this physical discomfort, um, especially um, up and down this, um, the spine. Now, what happens a lot of times with these energies is being that they're so potent, and this is um, more so necessary to be recognized intuitively by the incarnate. Some of these energies may trigger um, discomforts or old um, ailments within the physical vessel, which might not necessarily have to do with this particular physical incarnation, but past life incarnations as well. If anything, of course, the greatest um, advice that we possibly can give is to continue to stay hydrated um, the citrus does very well with the electromagnetic upgrades and buildups um, and assisting in processing them and um, numbing or um, dying down some of the symptomatic experiences within the physical body. And also, um, it's just for the most part necessary to listen to your body. Yeah. This, the, the body is extremely intelligent and it knows uh, what's taking place. It knows the calibration that's necessary and the alignment that's necessary. And um, in, in some scenarios, in some cases, it's necessary to, um, you know, seek uh, medical assistance or in the physical. In, in some cases, it's necessary. It's just that, once again, this is on an individual basis, um, some more um, serious than others. However, once again, um, as long as you're listening to your body and operating more through grounding and listening to your intuition, um, everything will work out just fine. It's just, once again, we continue to heal and ground every day and do the work and consciously make the decisions that's the best um, for us and assisting us with moving through this process. Because once again, the physical uh, vehicle 
is uh, very sensitive at present, and um, there there is not a whole lot of um, guidance that others, or many of you, have not already heard and sensed within yourself. Right. However, there are a few key things um, that's necessary to recognize, especially when it comes to the nervous system, because a lot of times um, the the, the, the mind can run away with these movies and cause more damage than is actually taking place or that's actually necessary. So um, for the most part, the grounding is absolutely necessary and staying hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed too, I've had uh, two that I can think of, but I know there's more over the last, I don't know, week or two weeks. These are people mm -hmm. that I've known that have had, uh, I guess what we would classify as more serious uh chronic illnesses, uh, and in a couple of these cases that I just talked to the last two days, they're mm -hmm. having, they're, they are talking to their body, they're listening to their body and trusting their intuition and actually experiencing some incredible improvement without the doctor's help. Um, mm -hmm. I think some of that's going on. Have you seen any of that out there? Of course, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, for myself, some of the experiences that I've had or are continuing to have uh, involves a lot of self-healing. Um, what's it called? Um, uh, some of the uh, natural methods I've actually embraced and um, experienced remarkable results with. Um, it's just more so being open and um, experiencing and embracing your expansion and awareness. Sometimes it could be some of the most um, some of the most sens sensible and um, yeah, like simple remedies can yeah. assist with some of the things that we spend um, a lot of money on, just based off of programming and feeling safe with the conventional ways of going about things. Um, once again, being open and um, operating more from this heart space, this intuitive lifestyle that we're embracing as awakens. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot that comes with that, and of course, there are decisions that come about where you used to make um, decisions that were dependent on the outside reality. Where um, when you recognize your own uh, sovereignty and your own ability to heal within, um, some of the more simple methods will. Um, bring about very remarkable results for the most part. Um, it's more so necessary for the individual to embrace uh, what's necessary and what's being guided intuitively. So yeah. um, there, there's a lot to go. I mean, once again, as a person that was in the medical field uh, for quite some time on the conventional side, some of the things that I've done have would be considered very, very unorthodox um, to medical professionals. Once again, I've you know, worked as a doctor's assistant for quite a few years um, in the hospital and in the field. And some of the things that um, I've embraced since my own transition and within the physical pains of my own experience or healing processes um, have um, come to be very true and um, more effective than anything I could ever imagine. Right on. Now mm -hmm. there's a, there's another side to this too. <laughs> there's the, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> the, there's the physical, the human, we'll use the term human, which we've just talked about, the effect on the body and so on. But there's also a hugely increased uh, dimensional presence and activities. <laughs> Yep. That, that, that uh, you know, are, are showing themselves in different symbi symbology or, or different types of experiences, be it galactic, angelic, uh, portals, gateways, stargates. Uh, um, you know, uh, Morgan and I had uh, an experience on May 1st where we saw pieces of our light bodies and then watched each other's faces morph into thousands of different lives off planet, off universe you know, all kinds of stuff. And I see other people talking about this. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak to this a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the most part, this is, um, this is reflective of the veil. The veil becoming more or dissolving more and more each day. It was expressed, it continues to be expressed continuously that 
every day in this dimension, the sun continues to elevate in frequency. With this elevation, those open and continuing to ground and harness these energies and allow for the downloads and upgrades to take place through their own um, conscious participation in um, the, the interdimensional shifting process. And for the most part, this is more so the, the change of reality when one actually participates or consciously chooses to meditate and allow for the 1111 codes to unlock and move a soul consciously through portals of existence. Right. As a person does this consciously, one becomes open to higher frequency, higher frequencies of vision. The new earth reality or the 5D reality, of course, it's a very, it's a gentle, however, um, continuously elevating process. It's a gradual process. And with that comes the upgrade in one's or one's own frequency. With that upgrade, one's own in one's own frequency there is the increase of frequencies that's visible to the physical eyes yeah. because once again um you know we're dawning you know from moving from carbon to crystalline but of course with that metamorphosis or transformation the the vision the the what's visible to the physical eyes um starts to experience um glitches if you will uh, mm -hmm. so, Technically or contextually, a glitch would be considered as somewhat of an error or mistake. But for the most part, um, these are trial um, visuals to assist the soul in becoming adjusted or calibrating to a new uh, frequency band of vision. Because once again, 5D, we're talking about um, seeing higher frequencies of views. The, the uh, third dimensional existence has limited us to a very small band of frequencies as far as vision is concerned. However, as we make these shifts, um, this becomes evident that the body is um, calibrating itself. And of course, the body includes the eyes, the physical eyes, and you're gonna start to see these things. Um, it's, it's for the most part, every individual has um, encoded within their past specific vision, specific, um, things necessary to see to assist one in realizing in a gentle way an upgrade in their visibilities. So um, this is happening quite often. However, yeah. um, it's, it's all a part of the package. Yeah. It's just more so necessary to be open. So it sounds like what you're saying is they're bringing this on a little bit at a time. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This is the, um, this is like a, somewhat of a, a theme uh, amongst the galactics, amongst the angelics. Um, masters know that the species, and actually it was, it was um, expressed metaphorically um, amongst some of the um, religious expressions is become a child, be as a child again, because we have, once again, the grounding, the grounding is where you're releasing everything. Everything that you've learned and all of the um, the the expectations and study that we've held on to as our reality, we release everything to move into a place of innocence. And through that innocence and sense of presence and being, we allow the frequencies of a higher vibrational reality to show us what is necessary to be seen and being open. Because once again, um, just as the functions of a crystal, there are healing properties available through the functions of a crystal. However, they cannot do their work or they cannot be effective to you as an individual incarnate of source until you're actually open to them. So right. as you become open and as your frequency increases and you start to release more and more fear, these realities will reveal themselves to you yeah. as a open uh, source open to these dimensional realities beyond fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when they fill up the room with orbs and light mm -hmm. beams, then we just hang on and let it permeate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 
This is so. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. That's good intel right there. So that's a good way to put it, though. You know, I mean, well, because it's true. It only makes sense. Yeah, you know, definitely. give them a little, give them a little bit at a time. And I think the a other little bit at a time. The, the other interesting thing is, and and I don't know how to really put this out. Let me see. So it's kind of like a, uh, a historical lineage aspect, like these activations and different rituals that come or, or just, I don't know, these presences that make up the infinite, you know, be they uh, galactic or, or uh, you know, past lives or whatever the case is, these things are popping up and people are talking about that. Are these, mm -hmm. is this, are these, to use the term in the context you used a second ago, glitches of our memory coming in, uh, mm -hmm. like, like cosmic uh, de uh, deja vus? Is that what that is? Absolutely. Great, great segue. That, that is exactly what's taking place. This is the, uh, the alignment um, gradually allowing itself to integrate within the consciousness, the conscious presence, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of life right now. I'll just, I'll use a metaphor um, just because it came to me. There's a lot of seats available, but you only can put your butt in one right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, and all of these realities exist in, in the present moment, in the eternity of this now moment. And of course, um, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to become more and more aware of. It's just that to overload the system with information and um, this database, to overload it yeah. would take a person off of, out of their sense of presence. Yeah. And to allow for this new reality to unfold, this sense of presence is absolutely necessary now. This is where everything takes place. This is where the uh, gradual expansion and wonders of the new earth um, actually manifests itself. It's just that, um, as we become more mature and we recognize um, the importance of being here, the more we're presented with information within our own being. And I don't want to say, well, put it this way. The information is available to those responsible enough to embrace the intel. Yeah. Allow it and let it go. Yeah. Because there's a lot. Yeah. And if there is a stream of consciousness or a a a spark of awareness or recognition of aspects of your reality or all that is you that's presented, um, the the immature soul or one consciously immature will hold on to the information and dig and dig and dig and dig and continue to expand yeah. upon it and yeah. attempt to figure out more and more and more about it and get lost in the sauce, if you will. Yeah. If yeah. a person can embrace the information, accept it, say beautiful, let it go and continue on with this work, then more will be presented. Yeah. And there seems to be a couple of things I'm observing. One is that, there is a clear, it's clear that someone, say, such as yourself, uh, mm -hmm. a higher aspect has walked in uh, and is present 24-7. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you have the glitch type, which what you just talked about, about taking it in, letting it go, where they're mm -hmm. so powerful coming in, or I was so-and-so in a past life, or I did this, or I was that, or I'm directly, mm -hmm. I'm directly speaking to this divine essence or that divine essence and kind of getting wrapped up in that getting, is that what you're talking about? Getting wrapped up in the sauce. Exactly. And it, and it can be, exactly. it, it can be misconstrued, I think as a spiritual pride, but it's really just, exactly. Yeah. It's just really the impact of the, the of what it is that powerful. Most definitely. Yeah. I experienced yeah. this initially myself. Um, it, my uh, realization of the embodiment. Um, and I'm speaking of, um, you know, actually uh, being a commander, uh, Ashtar, if you will. 
for, for, for me initially, this was, um, it's, it's similar to the first time someone consciously telling you uh, or informing you that you're God. Yeah. It's, it's a lot, it's big. And uh, from a place of humble intelligence, um, you can embrace it and say, okay, that's uh, great, but what does that mean? And um, I mean, for the most part, accept it and allow life to show you what's yeah. taking place. Continue to do the work versus holding on to the title. My main, my main intent and focus upon realizing um, the nature of my presence was the work. Yes. It wasn't about the title. It wasn't about going around and telling everybody what was going on and, and where I belong and the, you know, all of the accolades that come with such a title. In yeah. actuality, initially, um, I seen it as an extremely uh, horrifying responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, oh, man, you know, I really just want to see freedom. Um, <laughs> you know, I want to stop paying these bills. You know, you know I want my mom a house. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> like, well, I think. I know that this is a yeah. lot of. Uh, this comes with a lot of work. Yeah. Well, you and, said it. Um, I, I think you said it, though. You said those who are ready to can, that know to bring it in and let it go. But exactly. Also, but also, I'd add to that, I would add that those who are ready to do something with that information, you know, which is what well you're doing. Well played. Which is what you're doing. Absolutely. I had, well a friend, I had a friend I talked to yesterday, and she said that when she's getting this stuff in, and she's beating pretty high, she doesn't remember anything, but she understands mm -hmm. that when she needs it, it will come back, which goes back to your butt can only be in one seat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that's a great point you bring up because uh, there seems to be a lot of finger pointing in these light worker circles, as I observe. I don't get out there too much, but it's not too hard to see. But I think mm -hmm. we all need to give each other a break because – we got a lot of powerful stuff coming in and it, it could shake anybody in their boots, you know? Absolutely. A lot, a lot. And there's always, um, there's always more work. There's yeah. always more realizations. Um, the spiritual hierarchies are vast and expansive. Um, the, the capacity of the experiences that we've had here are enormous. I mean, gargantuous is just so big. It's just so much stuff. But once again, this is why um, through the simplicity of being here and being grateful and doing what it is that's in front of you right now, you allow yourself to experience um, the wonders of infinity. Yeah. And it's just simple as being here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you see more and more people having a higher aspect step in and be conscious all the time as this progresses? Of course, of course, it's 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 quite a few. It's all, there. There's a whole crew here. There's a whole crew of ascended masters. There's mentors. Um, there's aspects of the council. There's, it's, it's a lot of souls that are here that have these divine connections that are extremely potent in actuality, some embodiments. It's just that, of course, the it is a choice of the individual incarnate to embrace the work, yeah. to embrace or make the decisions that come with such a reality, that come with such um, a presence. Because um, once again, as we raise our vibrational frequency and we intend and that intention is coupled with um, the effort and energy invested into such a reality, you have the embodiment. Um, yeah. this, this, I mean, there's countless yeah. souls here from different planes and they know who they are. The, the reiteration of the titles you know, just becomes redundant because they, they know who they are. Yeah. The seeking validation or confirmation from outside is um, it's self-defeating. It's more so just an acceptance of who you are yeah. and allowing that 
that presence to manifest itself through the work that you're doing. And, and once again, this work takes place inside of the individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Humility is the order of the day. I think it's tied to that innocence. Um, Absolutely. But it seems like the net's pulling tighter. Uh, it seems to me like these people who know who they are, are more intensely intuitively connected. Uh, things mm -hmm. are happening in, a, a sequence of order that is that is not mind blowing, but it's just like you know, you don't even look three steps ahead of you. Just walk, and when you when you get to just the next walk. step, it, it it appears. Just walk. You know, just like Melissa, just walk. Melissa uh, hitting me up. You know, I was I had you on my list too from the top, and I was like, it's time to call Lavelle again, and then she hits me up with a message. But it but I'm seeing that I'm, I'm seeing that that net's pulling tighter and likes be getting like you know, mission oriented as well. Absolutely. The, once again, the intent and the willingness to do the work is the driving force of absolute magic. The, uh, just wanting to realize exactly how things work or having the conscious, um, trajectory, if you will, yeah. of what's necessary is, not necessarily necessary. It's just more so an aspect of being present, realizing, embodying, embracing who you are as an awakened soul, as God manifests, and then allowing, um, and take allowing the notions to come in and take those notions and the opportunities to serve um, as the most important thing that can take place in this now moment. And then yeah. um, your 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 eyes are being guided, your hands are being guided, your 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 words, the imagery, the intentions are all being guided where you will eventually find yourself doing the work that you are here to do. Yeah. Seamlessly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. You know, and another thing that's popping up too is it's almost like D-Day for this whole thing that you're talking about where the number one priority is our, uh, our individual role in the mission as we, as we comprise a collective and the mm -hmm. whole thing, you wrote a post two or three days ago, I put on my page. I don't remember exactly what it said, but it, but it was saying uh, everything, let go, everything you need, you'll get when you need it. And Absolutely. That really summed it up because what, what I've seen is like this and I'm trying to align with it is just what I call 5d exchange or 5d commerce where you just follow what you said, your priority, just keep pushing it, have, have the trust, and then it just comes. It, all abundance. It just comes. All abundance, all abundance comes even beyond resources and, and what we call money. Absolutely. Um, I, was, uh, <laughs> I was watching, um, well, Kanye West was talking in an interview and um, he just had, it was just a great analogy I was, uh, that he spoke of. And he talked about um, the industry that he's in. He's, he does a lot with fashion. And what he realized in moving, because he's very passionate about that particular area and working in that area. And he's, he, he realized at that, or at least where he is now, that everything you need, to get up the mountain, you get as you go up the mountain. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was, um, well, once again, the awareness is there. Yeah. It's just to see it come forth in a very practical sense from a person who's doing this particular work and, um, you know, has the, the, the physical conscious experience of, of, manifesting the intentions in a very real way it's just beautiful to realize and witness and he's like well you know we we started with nothing and as i just went every day and did what i needed to do um or things that were presented to me i just did the work that was presented to me and as i went higher and higher and higher everything that was necessary for me to continue to go forth was provided naturally mm -hmm. it's just i have to you know it wasn't a plan i just had to get up and go yeah and be humble and be grateful for life itself and continue to just go. 
open, open become be more open to uh, abundance and all of this and all of its forms and all of its aspects. Some through um, family, friends, energy, love. Like for the most part, it's all love. Yeah. And all of these different tools are provided that serve us best as individual incarnates in the best way that serves us um, spiritually. It all has a purpose. And the way that um, might be the way for another person might not be the way for us because um, our path is uh, paved in a fabric or in a way that serves us best in our alignment because everybody mm -hmm. has a particular alignment that's necessary every everyone in with that harmonic essence and path of alignment they're all different it's very unique for us and once again we must embrace um the path that's created for us because it allows us to gracefully gently move into the alignment that's necessary based on our own harmonic essence yeah that's that's alignment <laughs> that's alignment yeah. That's that. That's that line that we're all trying to walk and uh, shed this stuff yeah. along the way, like the bills <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah, most definitely. There, there, most definitely. there's, there seems to be too, because you know, I, 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 of course, come in contact with a lot of people with the shows, and there seems to be like a little uh, explosion of these divine conscious unions popping up, and these mm -hmm. miraculous stories of you know, uh, reunification or unification, you know, people all across the world from each other or whatever the case is. And, you know, I met one the other day mm -hmm. that they met, I said, how long y'all been together? You're looking at them and they, and, and they're obviously, they look like brother and sister. I mean, there's a big gold glow around them. And they said, three weeks. <laughs> well, we, we met three weeks ago. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? You know, uh, he's like, what? Yeah. I mean, it was, it stunned me, but, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of, like you said, the, the recognition, they know who they are, not just the divine conscious couples, but, uh, all, all, now are we talking in that respect about what we call the 144, 144,000? There is no... There is no distinction. Yeah. The 144,000 have their mission and they're all ascended masters. They're all ascended master extraterrestrial directly from our crew. Yeah. Um, here from the future. The, the divine unions, there are um, divine unions amongst the 144,000. Yeah. And we spoke on this before. So, uh, a lot of them, a part of their mission is serving as divine examples of divine masculine and feminine in harmonious coexistence, cooperation, and service to humanity. And once again, this is just more so to serve as an example, not to um, not to take any um, take any volume off of uh, such a state or such a mission. However. Um, there are divine unions uh, amongst many humans as well. So this is not necessarily exclusive to um, our crew. However, there are divine union agreements and soul contracts amongst our uh, ground crew collective that uh, serve particular serve purposes of that nature as well. So um, for the most part, I feel that when a soul has such a strong pull in that direction and intent in that direction it's there mm -hmm. however of course the the focus on that divine union is counterproductive because the only way the divine union takes place is through the individual's embrace of more and more potent levels of self-love and yeah. this is to be okay amongst oneself and not to be searching for another yeah. companion to complete oneself. Um, the divine union um, connection is all based on self-love, self-love, yeah. unconditional love. And this equates to more love, which equates to a deeper sense of magnetism and self-acceptance where 
um, that self-acceptance has no choice but to interlock the counterpart. It's all based on unconditional self-love, which allows that to take place. Yeah. Now, what are, you, what are your thoughts on uh, whether it's a divine conscious union or me and you or any, any pair of souls mm -hmm. that, that have such a connection, that have a connection, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they create a third energy where they can basically pull from each other's, I guess, individual inv infinite Reserve, if you skills. will. Yeah, in skills, abilities. Mm -hmm. So there's a pool gotcha. where we can pull mm -hmm. from. Mm-hmm. And you're asking in and what aspect does this affect the individual or a well, unique let's say let's, let's say connection? that yeah, let's say that uh, that for the sake of the discussion, you and I and we do. We have obviously some type of connection going back whatever yep. four or five years, and it's elevated to different levels. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a point where you know we we can all pull from the akashic? We can all pull from infinite intelligence. But as we stand here and now in this transition, which is somewhere in between the three D and five D, so to speak, mm -hmm. we have as incarnations, certain abilities, certain skills, certain strengths and such, uh, can, through a connection, I'm not saying this is conscious, but can we pull, are we pulling from each other the knowledge that the other may have, if you will? Uh, the, gotcha. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is already taking place. Yeah. However, it depends on the soul's level of consciousness. Like they, and I, when I say consciousness, I speak of uh, the level of grounding, the grounded nature of the individual, how grounded the person is. When a person, when a soul is grounded, we speak of this all the time. When a soul is grounded, they're more and more sensitive to what is taking place outside the energies around them and the yeah. energies flowing through them. The more sensitive the soul is, the more they recognize the nature of the energy being received. Right. It's, it, there is no specific indicator. Yeah. There is no specific indicator. However, the, the gauge of being able to be receptive and consciously recognize such a linking mm -hmm. is always within the individual's intuition and their level of sensitivity. Yeah. As a person grounds and they become more aware of their own energy and the energies around them, they recognize the links. They recognize right. the links and where they come from and they recognize where they're actually uh, co-creating. Yeah. However, through, if you will, um, it's similar to, it's similar to a mastermind group, if you will. Yeah. We'll call it a mastermind group of two. Right. Not necessarily the, the biggest, um, um, it's, I don't want to uh, phrase this, um, in that way. However, you recognize when you're co-creating with other individuals and when there is a sensitivity and energy in the air that we all pull from. Yeah. And this is all based in one sensitivity. As we become sensitive to the energies around us and we actually start to coexist and cooperate, um, we recognize that this is a group function. There's quite a few yeah. times that take place with here, me and the guys where we're creating ideas or music or whatever the case may be, having a, a meeting and we're all focused on a particular aspect or something that we'd like to manifest and realize. And I could sense where we're pulling from each other. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, an, it's like an attunement, it's like an attunement, be it, exactly. be it in it's that situation or a, a daily situation. It's like yeah. the, 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 when a, when a person is, um, when you basically, saying what each other wants to say someone yeah. else someone else might say it this is where yeah. you're on the same wavelength yeah 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it happens quite often when uh, like, souls are focused. Like when, you, like when your best friend, like, like you're in a room with your best friend, and then like um, he'll say something, and you're like, that's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like, it's almost like um, they're, they're they're catching that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they they're catching your thoughts subconsciously, but it yeah. comes out like um like like your intuition. So you just you just you just say something, and then you'd be like, oh shoot, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and exactly. then and then <laughs> then I think you yeah, that's a great comment, great example. And then I think you take it to a to the next level, as we were talking about what's coming in. What's coming into each one of us individually? I might be getting some galactic Pleiadian stuff. You might be getting something else, whatever. And that information, consciously or not, is is being there's a connectivity there as well, an attunement there. Absolutely. Yeah. Which, which there's a lot of that. I think I think everybody does that too, and they, but they just don't realize it. You know, they, yeah. They, like, yeah. Sort of feeling like, dang, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, most definitely. It's, it's, and that's why I I hesitated because it's done quite frequently. Um, amongst humanity now it's just the more the more information I give in attempting to um, box yeah. the, the intuitive awareness and co-creation and expression of that intelligence yeah. the more yeah. the, the, the possibility for blocks for yeah. analysis may occur yeah, don't think, just do. <laughs> exactly. Don't it's, think. <laughs> it's, happening, it's happening now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, once again, just um, we continue to remain open, and the greatest advice or the greatest knowing of all knowing is that of the frequency of peace. And yeah. with that, um, <laughs> there's so much taking place that um, it's overwhelming. Yeah, keep it simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just start chattering and we just mess it up. <laughs> there, uh, the the presence uh, individually and uh, globally of the galactic mm -hmm. crew, mm -hmm. galactic families, uh, multiple, 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 is is moving pretty fast too, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, absolutely. We're doing we're doing our work on this plane, and as we see it. There, there has been a few timeline shifts, and this is a uh, this is excellent news, excellent news. It's just once again continuing to do the work and remain beyond the analysis. No waiting. Um, the work that's being done right now is perfect. Yeah. This is why I'm attempting. Well, for the most part, I love. Um, I love talking to you. <laughs> I, love, I love I love time. talking to you. Mm -hmm. And uh <laughs> this there's so much and it's it's moving in such a great speed. It's in, yeah. in such great order that we wanna limit the amount of information being put because we don't want to necessarily encourage analysis. Right, exactly. It's all real time. It's all real time. Mm -hmm. It's all happening right now. Yeah. Yeah, I had a guy call me today. He's coming on, and nothing against him at all. He's coming on the show. He's a good guy. He's got some great information, but he wanted yep. to put some talking points together. He said, because he did two shows, and the one where the talking points were not used, he wasn't very happy with the spontaneous aspect. And I said, well, that's all we run on. <laughs> so, yeah, you, know, yeah no, it's, you, um... could, you could say we're going to do this, and then we flip it on, and boom. <laughs> it's uh yeah, that's well, what I mean. The, the, it's so it's so much um, it's so much safety and uh, coming up with talking points and you know sometimes our less bills run you know for you know like two hours sometimes and you know we like to you know put the information and stuff out there. It's just that as we continue to operate more from the heart space, it has to come from the stream, the stream the of stream. consciousness, this intuitive awareness from the heart space where you are allowing um, infinite intelligence to express itself. And this is not necessarily a mental activity. It's not a mind activity. Yeah. It's more so just open-hearted, loving conversation. Sometimes the, the laughter that um, me and you exchange, mm. there is so much intelligence expressed in 
that exchange, like the light and the downloads that take place in such yeah. a connection, um, carry more weight than some of the more complex um, aspects of the explanations being provided. It's That's just, correct. once again, we really have to have the, the wisdom to trust the unseen. Yeah, I agree. And I see it in these shows every single day and night. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's not the words, it's between the words, between the lines. It's, it's what you're talking that's, about. That's, this is the stuff. Yeah. It's just that open, you know, that opening, that uh, <laughs> it's flow. It's just flow. It's what Absolutely. It is. Yeah. This is the stuff. Yeah, it is. It's fascinating. And it's moving really fast. Did something particular happen between May 1st and May 5th? Some people had written about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yes, it, yes, it did. <laughs> what yes, was it did. that? <laughs> what was it? We, we came in on the first with what I told you about, and on the fifth we had something, you know. I'm tired of saying that's the most powerful thing that ever happened to me. The next day, it's just, <laughs> like, what, what is that? Oh, yeah. Well, was there something of significance uh, that was important, or was there a major shift? I mean, obviously, there was something. You know, Stargate, portals, I don't know. Well, the shifts don't stop. Yeah. However, the arrival of energies compacted with the celestial alignments do have a strong impact on um, the portals that we move through. Yeah. Now, those doing this work constantly, those of, those of you that are focused and continuously doing this work, you're going to experience um, these portals in succession with some of your peers in some of the most um, synchronistic ways, put it this way. Right. Because the, the, the work is being done at the same time. Now, being constant, constantly open to these energies, it speaks volumes. And there are those who have the intent, this is what I speak of, those who have the intent of doing this work every day, they're open to these energies all the time. We experienced a, a an arrival of a, a CME, a cronial mass ejection from Solaris on the, the very cusp of the beginning of, or the end of April, beginning of May. Yeah. Through that week, through that entire week was the arrival of these energies. There were quite a few alignments that were taking place. We had just ended um, a, a retrograde. And once again, I'm um, not promoting, I'm not necessarily a, a fan of being uh, dependent on celestial alignment for the nature of the experience. However, it does have an effect. It does have an effect. It's just that um, during that time, we did receive quite a few energies or at least um, move through quite a few portals based on those energy arrivals. Um, I, I don't even want to go into detail about what I was on the I, first. And the, <laughs> but, um, I think um, it was like one of those roller coasters, and we got to the top, and it just went straight. <laughs> absolutely. Not that it was a downer, because um, it wasn't a downer. It was just hugely impactful. I mean, it you know, was very impactful. Yeah. And um, once again, as we continue to ground ourselves, we um, remain more and more stable. We remain more and more stable. And as yeah. we remain stable and we move in these directions, we experience these huge energetic upheavals and catalyst of um, discomfort, if you will. It moves us even further, more rapidly down the stream, if you will. Yeah. Row, row, row your boat, <laughs> your motorboat. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You probably Absolutely. could have had a sailboat from the first to the fifth. It 
probably would have put you in some other dimension. <laughs> so, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I'm always happy to hear that, that, uh, you know, you're normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you're spitting yeah, well, this. There's, yeah, there's, 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 uh, a, there's a lot taking place. Yeah, man. there is. Um, there is. And, uh, do you think is, that, this goes for everybody. Uh, do you think that, I mean, some, I look around at, you know, everyone that's out here and, um, I see this, uh, I don't know, I think we should get, I don't think we give ourselves enough credit, man. I mean, we're doing the yeoman's work here, you know? This is the, this is the real work. This is the real work, no doubt about it. Um, it's subtle, however, very, very real and very integrated on every level of one's being. It can break you all the way down because it's not, it's, 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 it's not just skin deep. Yeah, We're talking about on an energetic level. Yeah, and um, for the most part, there is no way to um, fake this type of work. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. I, yeah. I'm just uh, embrace it. Yeah, exactly. And so, if I understand you correctly, these little peekaboos <laughs> that I'm getting from. <laughs> Yeah, there's different galactic family members that peek behind a tree and then hello and step back. They're going to continue until we assimilate beyond what is currently visible light and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most definitely. Peekaboos. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great <laughs> term. I like that. Um, <laughs> uh, they will continue. They will continue yeah. to evolve and um, – elevate and of course um increase in duration as we continue to evolve and yeah. allow like it is this is similar to um uh intuitive notions from infinite intelligence that when you welcome them yeah. when you welcome them and you act upon them the more frequently they come to visit and share that which is necessary because you're open and you have the sensitivity and wisdom to appreciate what is being expressed. Yeah. I mean, of course, infinite intelligence is always there. We are the embodiment. However, um, the outside assistance from our guides on higher and higher levels will continue to come in as we remain open as we're open channels to such information, such energy, such suggestions and allowing more love to manifest itself and to be expressed here. Because of course we are the physical embodiments. We're the incarnations. Yeah. And there, there are those um, within, within the spiritual hierarchies that intend to express themselves and express the nature of the divine as an example here in the, in the physical and of course, we are the vehicles. Yeah. And through being open, we allow ourselves to operate and act as channels of such blessings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the a message that seemed to come through during that time, I, I think, I, if, if I can even remember, but it was, I believe, during that time was, we're here. Uh, we're not going to, you know, do it for you, but we're here. Ask for assistance. And mm -hmm. ask for assistance and expansion in whatever aspect, whatever aspects of your life or whatever. That seems to be a powerful thing, at least in the circles that I'm in. Um, and, and the evidence of it seems to be, you know, along the lines of what you're saying, <laughs> it all comes with. Absolutely. It. Yeah. This is, this, is, this is probably one of the, this is one of the, most reoccurring themes that I've witnessed yeah. is that we are the angelic guardians and I'm going straight off the cuff they we want you to know you're not alone yeah first and foremost Secondly, in recognizing that you're not alone, it is very helpful to consciously, consciously cultivate 
our relationship. Yeah. And when I say consciously cultivate our relationship, we mean talking to us. Yeah. Not necessarily um, out loud if you don't feel like it. However, internally, express how you feel, your, your doubts, the things that you fear, the things that you're having problems with, the, the, the things that you intend to do. All of this is appreciated by us. It's just necessary to continue to speak to us if you feel a sense of doubt or worry. Express that. Intend to have a sign 